everyone resting on your feet for just a moment. The closing hour of this conference have now come. And the final message that we will take back to our homes all across this nation is about to be delivered. I had the joy of meeting our speaker just a few short years ago. And since the time that uh, we have fellowshiped together, the Lord has given her a place deep within my heart. She's a great woman of God that the extent of her work can never be measured just by listening to her speak. All over this country, she has gone to be the speaker in many conferences, and many times her appearance has spelled the difference between whether that ministry made its budget or not because she is so loving and so giving that before we came into this building, I contacted her and wanted her to come and be a part of our grand opening celebration last May. She said, I don't want to come in May. I want to come to the old building before you get to the new building. And in the two nights that she ministered across the parking lot, many people were saved. Many were healed. Many were delivered. But financially, she raised something like $122,000 and wouldn't take one penny. She said, I want it all to go on the building. She's mightily used of God. We don't know what the Lord will say through her tonight, but our ears are open. Our hearts are ready to receive. And I don't ever even have to call a name. All I say is the prophetess is coming. And everybody knows that's prophetess Juanita Bynum. Receive this woman of God. He touched me. Oh, he touched me. And all the joy that flood my soul. Something, something happened, and now I know he touched me. me oh he touched me thank you Lord and all the joy that flood my soul something something wonderful happened Wonderful happen and 
Cause and now I know that he touched me. I'm talking about nobody else. And he made me Yes, Jesus. For his son Jesus died on the cross for my sins, saved me, filled me with the Holy Ghost, and is helping me even this day to walk through my class of purification, taking my course and passing my grade. Thank God for my assignment. I honor the Lord for Bishop, I call him my father in the gospel, Bishop Patterson and his wonderful wife. And I'd appreciate it if you would just give him just an ovation for the mighty man of God he is. For the mighty man of God he is. Yes, for the mighty man of God he is. I love him and his wife. I love them because they just ain't nothing in them but truth. Love him because he's kind. That's right. He's the kindest man that I've ever met in my life. You won't find a person that is more of a father in the spirit than Bishop Patterson. And for that I say to God be the glory. And to all of the pulpit, to my own mother, to all of the dignitaries that are in the house tonight, to someone who has touched my life and I won't believe if I can help it ever come into her presence without acknowledging her and that is evangelist Diola Wells stand stand mother stand powerful woman of God changed my life as a young woman in ministry to evangelist pastor Gardner and to all amen come on somebody give her a hand clap and to everybody that makes up this powerful Congregation, 
Well, let me do what it is the enemy thought he wasn't going to let me do. Get your Bibles, if you would, and turn with me to Daniel, the 10th chapter. I don't want to miss acknowledging someone who I call friend. I don't throw that word around loosely. I've learned not to. To Evangelist Boyd, who is my best friend of 13 years. We belong to the same church. Why don't you put your hands together for her? And to Sister Beverly Crawford, Beverly has been a long time friend. And I thank God for the people of God who are striving. I was saying that to Evangelist Boyd on yesterday, day before yesterday, before she left and she was at my home and I said, in this hour, nothing means nothing. If we don't prepare ourselves to be purified in our assignment. We will become like a sounding brass and a tinkling cymbal if we do not allow God to take us through the death class. Oh my God. Some of us are not aware of the spiritual language because there is a language of the world and then there is a language of the religious church and then there is a language of the spirit and so when I began to talk earlier about passing my course and we have to understand that every situation that we're in right now is not our destiny it is our course God I thank you Jesus it's not the place that you're going to end up. It's the place that the Lord has designed for you to take a test and pass a class. God, I wish I had a witness right there. And you say, how long am I going to be in this situation? It's no different than going to natural school. You keep flunking the test, and it may be a different city, a different person, but the same spirit. Amen, somebody. Because God is determined that his people, and I'm not talking about the people that just go to church. I'm not talking about the people whose name is on the roll. I'm not talking about conference hoppers. I'm not talking about choir members. I'm not talking about just deacons. I'm talking about people that belong to the fold of the Lord. He has designed a divine assignment for you, a class for you. And he is determined that that class is going to bring you to purification and sanctification and he's going to keep you in that class until he sees a reflection of himself in you. God, I feel him tonight, saints. You don't know the warfare that I've gone through even just trying to get here, but I feel him. And I understand the purpose and I understand that when you are just a jack leg preacher and just somebody that's just stealing other people's messages and, and somebody that's not fasting and praying, the devil ain't messing with your ministry. I ain't gonna get no amens right there. You got engagements all over the country, but the minute you begin to get on your face before God, and the minute you determine in your heart that I'm going to speak as the oracles of God, I'm going to purify and give God's people what he is saying in uncompromised gospel. That's when all the gates of hell break out against you. But the Bible said that the gates of hell shall not prevail. Oh, I ain't got no real church in here. I don't know if anybody in here know what I'm talking about. But honey, he can come to the left, to the right. The Bible said the enemy will come in seven ways and he will flee. He'll come in one way and flee seven ways. Because when you have an assignment from the Lord, no weapon. And I know we say that all the time and we shout all the time. But there's coming a time in your life, if you are in this building at night, that you're going to face something that you think is going to kill you. But the Holy Ghost said, no weapon that's formed against you is going to prosper.
So you say, well, then why is it formed? It's formed because the Lord said to me, it has to test your depth in me. Oh, my God. The weapon got to find out how much of God is in you. The weapon got to find out, is your shout for real? Is your tongues for real? Oh, I ain't gonna get no amens right there. The weapon is fine now that you're rooted and grounded in God. The weapon comes to find out, can you be shaken? Because the Bible said everything that can be shaken, it will be shaken. And y'all, oh, y'all don't want to believe it. Look, look, listen, listen, look all over the church. How, 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 how everything is going now. Where anything go, everybody go, whatever, well, whoever, whatever. Honey, if you think you got a ministry, you come on. But you understand something. If God didn't send you, you going back. If God didn't call you, you going back. If God didn't anoint you, you going back. Because he ain't calling nothing unrighteous to preach us out. God, I wish I had a church in here tonight. He ain't calling nothing that is impure to take me to my next level. You can't take me somewhere that you haven't been yourself. And there's not a game anymore. Somebody said, well, 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 wait a minute, it's not a game anymore with me. But see, it's not an intentional game that we play. It's just a part of the system that we play these kind of games. You know, who can preach the best? Who can draw the biggest crowd? Who's the this and who's the that? And God has said, I don't care. He said, all I want to know is who's anointed. Who's on their face before me? Who's giving me days? Who's fasting? Who's praying? Who has a current word from the Lord? Now I know why the enemy didn't want me to get here. Now I know why he did everything he thought he could possibly do. But I told my mother to him, I said, I'm going to preach if you have to take me there in a wheelchair. I'm going to preach if you have to prop me up to the pulpit. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm going to preach if you have to drag me in there by my heels. Because anytime the devil attacks me like this, I know that somebody, and it's your divine destiny. There's something that God has with your name on it. Oh, let's see what he's saying. You got your, you got your Bible. You got your, you got your microphone. Let's, let's, let's see what he's saying. Start reading at the first verse. You got your Bibles, Daniel 10. Read it. In the third year of Cyrus, king uh -huh. of Persia, uh -huh. a thing was revealed unto Daniel. Watch this. He said a thing was revealed unto Daniel. In other words, the way that we embrace God is not just by what we read. There are dimensions in God. There are one and two and three and four and five dimensions in God. There's such a depth in God that we can find him if we fasted for a hundred years. We can never touch the end of God. And so in order to understand God, he must be revealed to us. My God, why do you think you saved today? You're not saved because you made up in your mind to be saved. Well, if you're not saved, why are you in here today? You didn't make up in your mind to just happen to come to church with somebody that's invited you. Honey, there's something else that is going on in your spirit. The spirit of the Lord has chosen you to reveal himself. To you. Read the Bible. In the third year of Cyrus, king of Persia, uh -huh. a thing was revealed unto Daniel. Read the Bible. Whose name was Belteshazzar. Uh -huh. And the thing was true. And the thing was true. And this is what we say all the time. The Lord said, the Lord said, the Lord said, the Lord said. I get so sick of hearing people. How did God told me? God told me. The Lord told me. The Lord told me. The Lord told me. The Lord told me. And he said, you know what? He said, the reason why you understand that I'm not saying all this stuff that people say I'm saying. He said, because they still walking in a lie. He said, because when my divine revelation come on them, they walk in truth. Because the Bible said, when the thing was revealed unto Daniel, it was true. Well, I don't see no more. Well, I don't, well, I don't understand it. Well, honey, I, I just think that people all just, all just do it the way they, they feel that they see fit to do it. Because that's not how my mother did it. That's not how my grandmama did it. Well, why they got to do it like that? Well, I don't believe you got to sweat like that. I don't believe you got to praise God all hard like that. I just believe you can just, just worship him in your heart. Well, I don't believe you got to look like this. I don't believe you got to look like that. Well, who asked you what you believe? Because the Bible said that when the spirit of the Lord is revealed to us, he reveals to us. What is the truth? That's right, that's right. Read the Bible. But the time appointed was long. But the time appointed was long. And he understood the 
the thing. And he understood it. Well, God said, God said, God said, can you tell me what the Lord, it, I, 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 the Lord spoke something to me and I didn't understand it. Did he really speak it to you? Because according to this Bible right here, when he speaks it, you understand it. See, a lot of times when we don't want to submit to the will of God, we pretend like we don't understand it. So the reason why we go to people is because we want another explanation as to, to give you an opportunity to say, well, I done, maybe I don't have to do it just like God said yeah. do it. And instead of you finding somebody like a Deola Wells that's consecrated, you go find some chap legged person that don't have come to church like you and don't have read their Bible like you and don't have past like you and ask them, what do you think the Lord is saying? And that's why the body of Christ is jacked up now from a bunch of people that are giving their opinions. Now see, let me help you with something. The only opinion you can give is your grade. That's right. See, if you're not walking holy, you will not give somebody the opinion of being holy. This is what you would tell them. We well, just keep on trying. He, honey, he understand. Honey, we all would have messed up before. That's all right. It, it's going to be all right. Just, just hang on in there. And so now the whole body of Christ got to hang on in their ministry. I mean, everywhere I go, everybody hanging in there. Ain't nobody in there solid. We just all hanging in there. See, I told y'all I wasn't gonna get no amen, so now I understand that. You know, you know, you know, you know, like it was when we was coming up, when you would look at them old mothers and you would see God on them steadfast and unmovable. Honey, we can't hardly find nobody righteous now. Listen, listen, name me 10 people that you know of right now off the top of your head that's sold out to God, that's travailing in prayer, that's seeking God, and I'll pay you. Are you hearing me what I'm saying? Because look around us. Listen, our churches are bigger than they've ever been. But honey, bigger don't mean better. Bigger means just more demons to deal with. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God begin to say to me, don't get impressed. Don't get impressed because crowds follow your ministry. Because everybody don't really want this, this thing called saved. See, see, that's why we dress it up. And make it look like it's something else to deceive people. Oh, look at how I look. Now, see, I'm preaching this in the church, Bishop. And I may have got maybe 10 amens out there. Make it plain. Come on. May I, may I got 10 amens. Because see, when you get through putting a flower on it right here, and you get through dressing it up right here, and you get through, you know, sliding over here, and, and, and then making everybody say, oh, it's all right, honey, you could, you could just hump over here, and then come over here and shout, and just live really shallow, and it really doesn't matter, just come as you are, and God understands, and then when you got people coming, and they thinking that they're coming to be saved, but when you strip down all of that stuff, that we say that it takes to draw them that it did not take to draw us when we got saved didn't nobody wear their pants hanging off their behind and hooked us to Christ they told us to come out and be saved are you hearing what I'm saying now look at how quiet it is and then we call this the new church but the devil is a liar there is no new church are you hearing me what I'm saying there is no new way are you hearing what God is saying it is a spirit of deception that have crept into the church my God have mercy here and I don't care who says it's alright you better get back in that Bible and know for yourself that it's not alright God ain't never used nothing from the world to purify us I can't get no amens now he ain't never told me to look to Snoop Doggy Dog to be saved he ain't never told me to look to Mary J. Blige to be saved see I'm not getting no amens cause now y'all gonna sit there and act like you don't know who they are you know who they are you got their tapes right in your car because somebody told you that it's alright if you listen to that I'm talking about soul winners that's what y'all say that's 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 what my father said it was 
He said, Mother, he said, it was a soul winner's conference. And so the reason why we're seeing so much mess in our church is because people are not being birthed outright. Okay, let me ask you, who birthed you? Who is your checker in the spirit? When you got what you called the Holy Ghost, who was there to confirm that it was really the Holy Ghost? God ain't getting no amen. I should have known it was going to be like this. See, I should, I should, I could see I'm on a new campaign. You know, since y'all seen me last, you know, I was, at first I wasn't going to say nothing. I wasn't going to really mess with stuff. Because I just said, well, you know, everybody doing this. I ain't going to mess with it. Well, maybe it is a new thing. Maybe, maybe, maybe God is doing that. And so, and so when I start, when I start fasting, the Holy Ghost said, are you crazy? He said, are you crazy? Let me show you something. He said in Judges, I got to bring this up because God, because God gave this to me. In Judges, there was a righteous man that was on a journey. I want you to see this now. I want you to hear this. And he stopped at a man's house that had decided to take him in and protect him. Do y'all remember the story? And so the man from Sodom came, a Benjamite came to the door and said, we want that man that's in there. So the Lord revealed to me that him wanting that man was him wanting a righteous seed. And so he said, give us the man that's in the house. And so the master of the house said, I'm not going to give this man to you because this man is a righteous seed. And so then he said, watch this. Then the man said, well, then give us his daughter. Give us somebody. Give us a concubine. Give us, give us one of them women in there. And so then I read that and I said, Lord, and I, my, listen, my first impression said he did not get the righteous seed. He gave him uh, his concubine. I said, wow. Then another story said he gave him his daughter. I said, wow. I said, he did not, he did not get the righteous seed. And then, uh, uh, Mother Wells, that thing hit me. And, and, and then the Holy Ghost said, no, look at this. He said, I'm trying to reveal something to you. He said, here is a man that comes to the door and he wants the righteous seed. He doesn't get the man and then he asks for a woman, which indicates that the man had a bisexual spirit. And, 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 and Mother Wells, what the Lord revealed to me, he said, this is the same spirit that is after the church. It is a bisexual spirit that wants us to think that the gospel goes both ways. Y'all ain't saying nothing in here, but we ain't got no bisexual gospel. The church is straight. We're not a gay church. You can't dance over here and hug and then come over here and shout. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing here. You can wear your hair purple. You can put your dress on up here. It don't matter. It don't matter. Because long as it's in your heart, that's what it is in your heart. Let me tell you something. If it's in your heart, some of that by now ought to be oozing out of your flesh. Y'all don't want to say amen, but I done, listen, I done made up in my mind that if don't nobody help me preach it, I'm going to preach holiness or hell because Jesus is soon to come back. And we ain't got time for a shallow gospel. Are you hearing what I'm saying? We ain't got time for it. And we sitting up in here being rocked to sleep by our own convictions. Because the Bible said, there is a way that seemeth right unto man, but the end of that way is destruction. Sit down, because I got to do this. Come on, come on. 
Some of y'all are here saying, you know, I want you to pray for me because I'm in a backslidden state. You ain't never been saved, for real. Look, I know the amens. Let me tell you this. Why is it every time I say something like that, the amens get low and I'm supposed to be in church? Tell me, I'm in a backslidden state. You ain't never been saved, for real. Because see, sanctification means to lead something and go to God. And so what we're trying to do is we're trying to go to God without leaving nothing. Oh, y'all ain't saying, listen, if you do everything you used to do, then what were you saved from? I ain't gonna get no amens in here. If you still listen to the same music, you still dance the same way, you still dress the same way, you still talk the same way, you still walk the same way, then where is your proof that you really got saved? I, I don't know, I don't know what to say. I don't because sometimes here lately I've been just kind of feeling kind of forlorn, you know. Like somebody said to me, you know, you, you, you really shouldn't be preaching like that because, you know, you, you ought to just uh, lighten up because, you know, when you, when, you, when you go places and you preach like that, then folk ain't gonna invite you. Because they don't want you to be talking about they folk, especially because they pay big tithes and all that. So you all just lead people along. But see, I found out something in the book of John. He said, he said, oh, wait a minute. See, I got to read, I got to read it to you because you're going to say, what, well, that ain't, no, that's not in the back. Here, Tanya, read, read that. Go, go to John. Got to read this to you because y'all going, y'all going to de declare that we'll see. Well, who is her to tell us what, well, that's just her opinion, what she Go to John 15. I believe I, I believe it's John. You see, I got it underlined. But right there, right there, John 10. I think it's, go, keep, keep looking, keep looking. Keep looking, because y'all know how I am. I got to mark it out, because I ain't really got it in there. You know, I can't, yeah. Right on, over, right on. Yeah, uh-huh, right there. See, my Bible got scribble scribbles in it. A lot of times I don't know what stuff is. I just know the color that I marked. Come on, read. John 10, 24. Uh-huh. So the Jews surrounded him. So the church people surrounded and, and began asking him. And they came to the soul when this conference. How because they, they wanted to know how long are you going to keep us in doubt and, and suspense? Am I not going to know whether or not I'm coming out of this trial? If you really are the Christ. If you really are God. Tell us so plainly and openly. Then explain this thing to me. Jesus answered them. And the Holy Ghost answered tonight. I have told you so. I'm trying to tell you. Yet you do not believe me. Yet you don't believe me. You don't trust me. You don't trust and me. You don't rely on me. You can't rely on me. The very works that I do. What are the very works that I do? By the power of my Father. By the power of my Father. And in my Father's name. And in my Father's name. Bear witness concerning me. What did they bear witness of me? They are my credentials. They are my credentials. And evidence in support of me. And they got evidence in support of who but I am. You do not believe but me. But you do argument in your mind. The Lord said, put it down. But why, Lord? Well, John ain't doing it. Well, Jane ain't doing it. Well, I don't see that Roman. She got the Holy Ghost. She's still preaching. She's still alone. Her nose still pierced. Why I got to put it down? You teach it. Holy Ghost said fast. Well, why can't I have a consecration? Well, why I got to fast? Well, why I got to go with no water? Why I got to go? Why I got to put everything down? Why can't I just have some juice? Well, why can't I do a half a sandwich a day? The Holy 
Holy Ghost said, that company right there is not good for you. Well, why? We've been praying 20 years. How do we go way back? That's my home girl. I know she's my buddy. How do we been growing in God? Why I can't be with him? Well, why I can't be with him no more? Watch this. Because when you're his, there is no argument in your spirit. When you're his, the only thing that comes out of your mouth is yes, Lord. God, I wish I had somebody here want to be that want to be saved for real. You're not arguing with God. That's how I know that we're not belonging to Him like we say we are. Listen how quiet it is in here now. This is the most not giving up, not being broken version of the church I ever seen in my life because really the reason why I'm preaching like this because I'm scared I'm scared of what I'm seeing oh y'all you ain't gotta say amen I'm scared of what kind of what kind of saved we say we are because the only time we feel the power of God is when we walk through those doors but baby, I'm not talking about that kind of save. I'm talking about a save where you can call that power up in your belly in the kitchen. Ooh. I'm talking about the kind of save that when your baby gets sick, you can lay hands on him and the pastor ain't nowhere around. God, I wish I had somebody want to be saved like that. I'm talking about the kind of save where that power come on you in the grocery store. It come on you in your car. It come on you in your job. tell y'all something before I before I got here I was all night I was in the presence of the Lord and that thing was on me really heavy and I said God I said your power is so great and it's so wonderful and I was basking in his presence and he said to me he said I want you to understand something he said I'm not my presence is not here to touch you Can I just say that? Can I teach this? He said, I'm not here to touch you. He said, I am here to eternalize you. He said, every word that I speak, it's spirit and it's life. And it's life eternal. And the minute I speak a word across the pulpit and your spirit accepts it, that devil can do whatever he wants to do with your life, but he cannot annihilate that word because it is eternal. Oh my God, are you hearing what I'm saying? He said, we accept the word like it's, like it's just another book. I was, I was on the plane today coming here and I said, to myself, I got on the plane, I was feeling fine, nothing wrong with me. Hadn't been sick. Got on the plane and sat down, the plane took off, I said, I'm going to sleep. So I'm asleep for a few minutes because I'm tired. Woke up out of my sleep, and I woke up out of my sleep sick. And I said, my God, I feel sick, I said, I feel. So I called for the flight attendant, I said, can you bring me some uh, seltzer water? So she brought me the seltzer water, and I got to, Got the seltzer water. I took one sip off the seltzer water and I started. She said, You all right? I said, No, I'm not. The next thing I knew, I had fallen over on the side and passed out. When I came to, I was laying on the floor of the plane. And they was talking about landing the plane in Cincinnati. And they asked, Was a doctor on board? And the doctor rushed up to me and said, Her heart rate is low. Her pulse is low. The first the flight attendant was saying, I can't find a pulse. I can't find a heart rate. And I felt like everything in my body was leaving, like I was dying. And I said, God, I said, what is this? And the doctor leaned over and he said, he said, we taking you to Cincinnati. He was leaning over me like this. He said, we taking you to Cincinnati. And I started doing my head like this. He said, are you all right? And I, and I, I, I couldn't hardly talk. He said, we taking you to Cincinnati. But he understand something. My body was sick and my body was going through a change. But my spirit was carrying an assignment for Memphis. And all I can get out of my mouth is take me to Memphis. I got to go to Memphis. I got to go to Memphis. I got to go to Memphis. Now God spared my life so I can get to Memphis to tell all of y'all that, honey, there's a difference between clean and unclean and holy and unholy. Watch 
this, watch this, sit down, sit down, read, 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 go back to take Daniel, read, watch this. But the time upon it was long. Watch this, y'all. And he understood the thing. Uh-huh. And had understanding of the vision. Watch this. In those days, uh-huh. I, Daniel was mourning three full weeks. Wait, 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 wait. I, 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 the Lord touched me. I went to church and, ooh, honey, I just praise God. Ooh, I can still feel that power. And the Lord insulted me. I felt like he insulted me when he said, he said, do you not know that it's been years since I have really poured out my true anointing on people. I said, what? I said, and I started naming times and I know we had some powerful service. Mm -hmm. He said, uh -uh. He said, we going as high as our intellectual knowledge of who he is is taking us he said but understand something i don't mean to insult you you ain't really had my uncut spirit to lay his hands on you for real daniel said when that spirit touched me I couldn't eat. It took my appetite. See, I'm trying to understand how we can come to a powerful service like this and leave and line up at Denny's full of carnality. See, see, I can't get no amens. Here we go again. Here we go again. Here we go. Because see, church to us, all of these years, even me, have been, you go to church, you shout, you have a good time, meet me at Dennis. Meet me at this place. Meet me at the IHOP. Meet me over here. And listen, before we can get off the church crowd good, honey, we can a bunch of foolishness. We all in the, in, the, in the restaurant feeding our face. But I'm talking about a touch from God that by the time you get to your car, you can't even hardly drive. Honey, you so under the power of God, you can't even walk in your house. You don't want nothing to eat. And look at how people looking like, like what? What's she talking about? What? What's she? What? What? Well, what? What kind of? What you talking about? See, when we got the Holy Ghost. See, when y'all get it, y'all get it like this. That there, there it is. It's yours. And then they blow on you. And they say, speak. And then and they see they got this new thing now where they rub your jaw under here. Come on. Krr, krr. Re repeat after me. Krr. And watch this, watch this, watch this, watch this. You ain't getting the Holy Ghost. What you're getting is a transference of their spirit. And so then you start speaking in the tongues that they gave you. Good God, but they're not the tongues of the Almighty God. Because when I got it, I couldn't come out of it. When I got it, honey, they had to take me home. When I got it, they had to drive me home. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? When I got it, on the next day, the washing machine was speaking in tongues. The dryer was speaking in tongues. The car, are y'all hearing it? Honey, when I got it, I couldn't go to work the next day. Them tongues wouldn't stop. I couldn't talk English for at least two days. That's why we ain't got the keeping power. Cause that thing didn't get in your belly. It got on your tongue, but it didn't get down in your belly. That power didn't hit the bottom of your belly until everything in you that's telling God no, begin to say yes Lord, yes Lord, yes Lord, yes Lord. Oh no baby, that thing ain't got down in the core of your spirit. I don't know why God got me doing this. You know what I found out? A friend of mine died a couple of months ago. And I said, Brother Curlin, go on to be with the Lord. And I was sitting in this funeral. First time I had been to a funeral in 20 some years. And the Holy Ghost said, I want you to go to this funeral. I want you to the funeral. He said, now I want you to understand something. While you doing all this preaching, and all this, hey, ho, hey, say it. He said, you got to make it in. That's right. Ooh. He said, he said, 
when I call your name, you got to get in the gate for yourself. He said, we are having church, but we are forgetting to remind you all that you got to make it in. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing. Honey, when you die right now, if God were to call you right now, you got to get in. I'm not talking about, and then the Bible said, the, listen, the righteous is going to scarcely make it. Wait, 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 let me, let me, let me make that clear. Mama, mama, stand up. Stand up, please. Mother, can you stand up for me? Bishop, can you stand up? Mother Patterson, stand up. Mother Diola, stand up. Evangelist Gardner, stand up, please. Just stand up. These are people that, that, I, that, I, that I deem. I don't know everybody, so forgive me if I don't. Dad, stand up. Now, when you look at all these people right here that I know of, I really can't spot their lives that I know of. And so you look at Mother Wells, all you know is prayer, come on, get in God. You know, you look at Mother Patterson, you, all, all you see is you better get real. You better come on and turn it over to God. You better come on and let God do it. You look at Mother here, it's all about consecrating. Come on, get yourself together. Consecrate for a while. You look at Bishop, Bishop, Bishop's whole focus is you got to be saved souls. You look at my mother, my mother has read the Bible all the way through three times. Every, every year for convocation, they said, how many people have read the Bible through? She's the only one to get the award for the last four years. The only one by herself out of a convocation, out of a convocation of about 4,000 people, she's the only one that read the whole Bible all the way through in one year. So then the Lord said to me one day, he said, I want you to look at these people. He said, I want you to understand something. Why are you trying to listen to a little bit of James Brown over here? Why are you trying to listen to a little Wendy Houston over here? Why are you trying to hang out over here? Why are you trying to every now and then do this, do that, get away with a little bit of this? He said, all of them that you see and deem to be righteous, they're going to barely make it in. No, 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 no. Did you get that? They're going to barely make it in. I have never seen my mother do anything wrong, but she's going to barely make it in. So what about us? I said, what about you? When I'm slipping and sliding and humping and got somebody telling you that this is all right and that is all right. Honey, if they're going to scarcely make it in, then we're not going to make it. somebody in the Holy Ghost. I don't care what you think about me because I got an assignment from God and he said get my people ready. Y'all ain't said he said go in the church and pull out the remnant because everybody in here don't want to hump and dance. There's somebody out there that want to be saved for real. There's somebody out there that want God for real. There's somebody out there that really want to be saved. When I got saved, I came out the world. I ain't studying y'all. I said, when I got saved, I came out the world. Don't nobody teach this no more. Yes, yes. No, I tell you what they teach. Here we go. He gonna bless you. I told somebody the other day, I said, I don't want to hear another message that's telling me God gonna bless me. I don't want to hear another, he gonna give me a car. I don't want to hear another, he gonna give me a house. Cause I'm gonna tell you something. When you get to get in your house and you get to get in your car and you get to being wealthy and money coming, you going straight to hell. If you don't get yourself right before God. I don't know what kind of Bible you read, but my Bible said what? Does it profit a man to gain the whole world and lose his soul? So watch this. So watch this, and I gotta tell you nothing but truth. So now we're not consecrating anymore to be saved. Here we go, we got a new thing going now. Treat your neighbor right, cause they can hold up your blessing. You better, you better do folk right, cause they can stop your miracle. So now our purpose for living right is not so we can make it in, but so we won't miss our car. And so we won't miss our house. I didn't get saved to get a house. I did not get saved to get a car. When the gospel was preached to me, twin, I got saved because I wanted to miss hell. And somebody said, don't talk about hell. Don't scare people. Well, let me help you some. You weren't scared when you were smoking reaper. You weren't scared when you were sleeping with somebody and didn't know whether or not they had AIDS or not. You weren't scared when you were shooting a needle. You weren't scared when you were smoking crack. And I'm not going to back up about talking about hell because hell has enlarged itself. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There is a bottomless pit for you and your house 
and your car and your new clothes and your St. John Lynch and your Gator Ties. Are you hearing me what I'm saying? It's real. I can feel it. Every now and then I can feel it. I can feel it. When I feel myself wanting to slip, I can feel the fire of hell. I'm not a love of Koshaya. Not because I'm going to lose my car, but every time I feel myself wanting to do something wrong, I can feel it. I can feel hell. People don't talk about hell no more. Because I'm going to tell you something. There's a big grace message going on. Grace. I'm going to tell you the kind of people that preach grace. People that's caught themselves. That's what God told me. He said, you preach a shallow gospel when you shallow. Hey. I ain't getting no amen to it. You preach it. You preach a message that says, "Well, here, here you go. come on, honey. It's a, it's a, it's all right because I'm gonna tell you something. His grace. His grace. His grace. And we are gracing people right to hell. But what somebody better tell you? His grace is, but so is his judgment. Y'all ain't saying nothing now. His grace is, but you're going to reap what you sow. Y'all ain't saying nothing in here. His grace is, but there is a governmental judgment for what you do. Are you hear what I'm saying? My Bible tells me that we're going to give an account for every deed that is done in the flesh. Are you hearing what God is saying tonight? And listen, I didn't come here to make you mad. I know. Your bad news, but when you get to heaven, you're going to thank me for telling you the truth. That's all I got. Wait, wait, wait. That's all I got. That's all I got. That's all there is. And can I help you with something? And the Holy Ghost said, he said, any pastor, any pastor in this hour that is not some kind of way in one of his messages is not tapping on the message of holiness, he in trouble. Cause he is not in tune with where God is. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing here. Y'all ain't saying nothing here. Honey, we have left that one stage. The stage of we bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the... We done passed that stage of... Oh, we give you praise, oh Lord. Ma, 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 Everybody touch your neighbor and tell them that the Lord is good. I'm so glad you're here. So glad you're here. So glad you're here. Now give the Lord a good hand praise. Now we're going to take the offering. Now Deacon so-and-so is going to read the scripture. We're going to have an A selection and a B selection from the choir. Now open up your Bibles. And let's go to 10 steps on how to get a miracle. 12 steps on how to walk in grace. 13 steps to how to win your neighbor. And one day you're gonna walk in there and God just, he gonna say, open up your Bibles and the power of God gonna jump up. He gonna say, get saved! again say it God ain't saying nothing here God I feel God in here tonight I feel God in here tonight I feel God in here tonight he said the people of God suffered violent and the violent taken by force say it Cute stuff ain't gonna work. 
Oh, I ain't getting no amens now. All that little dibbing and dabbing and don't want to mess up your makeup and don't want to mess up your hair. And I paid $600 for this. Honey, don't nobody care because I don't know about you. But my soul is in trouble tonight. My soul need a touch from the Lord. My soul is understand something there is another level that's jumping on the church right now and it is a level of I don't care I'm not studying you I don't care what you got on I didn't come to church for you I didn't come looking for you you don't know what I done been through you don't know what the devil has been doing to me you don't know how the enemy been in my house and the first opportunity I get Breakthrough. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. See, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. He told me. He said, "You ain't got time for performing anymore." You ain't got time for trying to win the best preaching prize. You ain't got time for trying to impress nobody. He said, preach them out. Preach them out. Get them out the fire. Get them out the flame. Tell them the truth so they can be saved. Say yes. Say yes. Listen. See, in here tonight, in here tonight, I'm a firm believer of this. He said, when you go to church and you look around the people, let me help y'all with something right quick, right quick, right quick. Some of y'all said, you know what? Yeah, well, I, I, was gonna, I was gonna get my breakthrough because that's what it's all about. It's no coincidence that the men of God will call this the Soul Winners Conference when it's broadcast as breakthrough. Bountiful blessings. Now watch this, watch this, let me show you something. Let me show you something. That's why you can't govern your breakthrough by your neighbor. Because your neighbor may be a church goer, but they may not be gods. See, 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 come on, come on, come on, come on. He's not, he's not purifying who ain't his. Are you hear what I'm saying? He's not touching who's not his. Are you hear what I'm saying? So the reason why this power is coming in here tonight, not so you can feel good. Tell me, I said, you know what? I just felt so good. I just felt, I just felt so wonderful. When I read this thing down, Daniel said, when he touched me, he said, he knocked me to my knees. He said, I couldn't even get up. He said, watch it. He said, all of my commonness, I lost it. My body went limp. He said, everything in my inward part started to come out. He said, I couldn't even anoint myself. I couldn't even pretend like I was a preacher. He said, when that power hit me, I lost everything that I was. He said, I was drunk laying like a dead man in the presence of the Lord. He said, when that power hit me, he said, then he set me up on my knees. And the Lord said, I can tell you those that are mine because when I touch them, I send them into intercession. Oh, uh, y'all ain't saying nothing. I don't send them back to being who they used to be. Y'all ain't saying nothing. I don't send them to acting like they used to act. He said, when I touch you for real, I will send your spirit directly in the prayer. He said, he said, watch this. He set me up on my knees. He said, then, powerful thing I saw here. He said, that's why so many people are so disappointed. Well, I ain't got it yet. I ain't got my miracle yet. I ain't got my, I ain't got my blessing yet. I ain't got my, watch this. Let me show you something, because you're going to say it's me. Tanya, read that 12th verse. Then said he unto me, uh -huh. Fear not, Daniel. Uh -huh. Said he unto me, uh -huh. Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day uh -huh. that thou didst set thine heart to understand. The first day that you set your heart to understand. And to chasten thyself before thy God. Wait a minute, and to correct yourself. Here we go. 
Let me finish this lesson. Here we go. Take it out, Jesus. Fix it, Jesus. Lord, deliver me from this. God, remove this. Chastise yourself. I don't know about your Bible, but my Bible told me to put it on. He said I can put on Christ. Now, now, now look at how, see, there the amens go again. Because anytime, watch this, Bishop. Anytime we have to work out our own soul salvation, then the amens get low. Because we want people to prophesy us out. We want people to lay hands on us. But I got news for you. You're going to work out your own soul salvation with fear and trembling. You're going to put Christ on. Y'all ain't saying nothing. No, he ain't gonna take, watch this. He ain't gonna take nicotine out. He ain't gonna take the taste out when you still buying the cigarettes. I can't get no amens right there. He ain't gonna deliver you from lust when you still calling Johnny. See, I can't get no amens right there. I don't know why. I don't know why can't nobody say amen right there. I don't know why I can't get no amens right there. He's not going to deliver you and you still buying it. Touch your neighbor and say, you got to go to work, baby. He said, the minute, read this, read it. For from the first day that thou didst set thine heart uh -huh. to understand uh -huh. and to chasten thyself before thy God and to correct thyself, the words were wait, 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 wait. The first day, you start saying, get over here. We ain't going over here. You ain't going to buy this. We ain't going over here. You ain't going to do this. Because we saved. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. I'm not getting in my car. I'm not going to buy nothing. No, 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 no. See, now see, look at y'all. Some of y'all some of y'all looking at me funny because I know what you thought. You thought, you thought, poof. So and so prayed for me. See, I understand something. I've been blowed on and it didn't go away. Do I have any blow on me members? I've been blowed on and it didn't go away. I got hands laid on me. And I still couldn't stop sinning. Y'all ain't saying nothing here. I got pieces of paper and threw it away and said, this is my last time. It's behind me. Anybody ever been to a service like that? Well, let me see if you're familiar with this one. I stood up and I turned around three times like they said and I sat back down. Where y'all at? Because I know we have. Do I have any people that that happened to you? Stand up and turn around three times and tell the devil it's over. No, stand up and turn around to your seat and say, when I sit back down, I'm going to sit in the victory. We turn back around, sit down, church, go up and smoke. Hey, ho, I'm sitting in victory. Ho, ho, ho. And get up the very next day and go right back in it. Because you know what? Ain't no chair got it. Ain't no tissue got it. Y'all ain't saying, but it's in the word of God. You're going to have to get in your Bible and meditate day and night. You're going to have to turn your plate down. How bad do you want it? You're going to have to fast. He said, these can come out by fasting and praying. Not by standing at television and going to the movies and in Blockbuster. Are you hear what I'm saying? They come out when you get in your word. They come out when you stay in that Bible. They come out when you seek him day and night. He said, the minute you turn and you, watch this, you, you, you begin to chastise yourself. The minute you begin to bring correction to yourself. The minute you turn around and tell you for the first time, self, you was wrong. Self, you got a lying spirit. Self, you got a backbiting devil. You got a hypocrite in spirit and you need to die. The minute you start killing your flesh and saying, you know what? You're not going to live. You're not going to stay. You're not going to contaminate me. I done gave my life over to God. Are you here? The Bible says a man that cannot rule his own spirit is like a city without walls. That means anything goes in and out of you. And why did I come tonight? I come tonight to tell you to grab a hold of your spirit and begin to declare war on your flesh and tell your flesh, we're going to serve the Lord. You go in your Bible when you don't want to. You're going to fast. You're going to pray. You're not going to take me to hell.
He said, the minute. I close with this, the minute. I don't know about y'all, but I'm looking for our church. I can't find it. Wait, 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 wait. Somebody said, well, honey, that's the old way. And you need to lead the old way back there. Where well, this new way ain't working. Y'all ain't gonna make me feel shame. If I gotta preach all by myself, I don't care. I don't have no problem with it. Cause this new way ain't working. Cause see the new way is leading them to the brook. And they drink it, but they ain't got no food for the soul. Cause new way don't have revelation in it. Because the new way don't have the mind of God. It has the form of God, but it doesn't have the mind of God. So the new way can bring people to the form of God, but they cannot bring them into the mind of God. And unless you got the mind of God, you won't walk in God's statues. So we got a whole lot of movie stars all over television, everywhere, football players, basketball players. I thank my God for being here. I thank God for who is ahead of my life. I thank God because he's my savior. I thank God for being ahead of my life, and he helped me to make this nasty record. I thank God because he helped me make this filthy album. And I give glory to this award right here. I hold this award up here and I said, I give, this, I give honor to God for this award. And do you know why the people in the world are saying they're saved? And they're not really saved. Do you know why? And I close with this because the church has ordained and their church has condoned it. And the church has said, watch this, because they're no different than Nicodemus. They're no different than the rich man. The word of God does not say they can stay in there and be superstars for the devil and come in here and still say they say, that Bible said, if you want my life, then lose yours. And throw stones at me if you want to. But tonight on this platform, tonight on this platform, I'm going to say this. And you can take this all over the country. I declare war on the new way. I'm taking our church back. Oh, you ain't got to say amen because I don't care. I declare war that is holiness. He said, be ye holy. No, this one don't make you shout. Here. No, this one don't make you run around the church. Cause I'm beyond all that. This one don't give you laps. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is the place right here. This one right here, this, 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 this kind of message right here don't make you popular. But John the Baptist wasn't popular. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Anybody that God really used to declare his assignment wasn't popular. Are you hearing me what I'm saying tonight? So tonight, forgive me. Forgive me because you're not going to shout. I'm sorry that my message took your dance. But it's going to get you in the kingdom. And that's all I'm concerned about. Say yes. See, when I walked in here, this 
was my assignment. And I'm being graded tonight. So when I get back to the hotel, he going to say, did you tell him what I told you to tell him? Because if anybody in here miss God and end up in hell, it'll never be because I told you to tell them that they couldn't be shacking and still be saved and you wouldn't tell them. Hold on. I told you to tell them that they couldn't have a wife and a girlfriend. Y'all ain't gonna let me teach this. I told you to tell them they can't come to church and be saved and they got their kids living for the devil and got all this mess up in your house and all these posters and stuff and Janet Jackson and all this mess talking about you got a holy house. The Bible said that's for me and my house. We're going to serve the Lord. You can't shout in church and your kids is on their way to hell. I'm sorry that I had to be the one to tell you that there's a standard to God and God requires a standard and you're not gonna be like the church in the book of Revelations where you wear the name of Jesus but you don't want the name of Jesus he says stop calling my name if you ain't gonna live my lifestyle stop talking about you know Jesus and you ain't left the world Stop talking about it. I, I love the Lord in here. He said, if you love me, you keep my commandments. So I don't care. I just got a new spirit on me in the last two months. I don't care what nobody say. I don't care what they think. Say what you want to say. But I got an assignment to do, and I don't care what nobody else is telling you. I'm here to tell you right now, you better get on your face before God. And see, and see, understand something. Now, I done took something from you. I'm gonna tell you what I just took from you. I took away Christian performance. I just killed you. Watch this. Because, because, because right here, play the music. Play me some music. Right here is where everybody do this, Mother Wells. Oh, I know she's talking to me. <laughs> and right here is where the preachers say, is there anybody in here that feels that you want to rededicate your life to God? And here go Christian theatrics. I do. God is doing something. Oh, God. the music and don't plan to walk out none of it Christian theatrics and don't plan to live one day holy can't go one solid week and say, no evil have I done. Don't have a testimony that you went seven solid days and you can mock your steps in righteousness. Don't have the testimony that you made it to Wednesday night service and kept your mind on Jesus. But we come in here and we practice Christian theatrics. Hollywood ought to come in here. Because some of y'all will be millionaires. And so tonight the Holy Ghost said to me. Stop the theater. The church is built in the round but it ain't a theater. He said, come conscious to the fact that I got on the plane feeling fine. And if it wasn't for the grace of God, he could have took my life just like that. Watch this. So you in this building tonight. 
And this is what you're saying. Well, I, I, I came tonight because I kind of wanted, I kind of wanted God to do something for me. You know the truth. Stop your lying. You know the way. You know how to get to God. Y'all ain't saying nothing. You better take this message home and get in your bedroom and get your Bible where ain't nobody watching you. And you better learn how to touch God for yourself. I wish somebody can talk to me. I just wish I had somebody counsel me. We don't counsel demons. And you talking about the church has lost its power. Yes, it has. Because now we counseling devils. So what do you do when you counsel demons? All you do is teach the devil how to behave. So a lot of the demon spirits are just controlled spirits. They're not casted out. They just already know when not to act up. Oh, y'all ain't saying nothing in here. So the devil ain't gone. So why are you so shocked when you see people cut up? Because the Holy Ghost spoke to me and he said, there is a move. And let me, let me give you this prophecy. There is a move. Listen to this. Listen to this. Listen to this. Listen to this. There is a move that will begin across this country the weekend of Thanksgiving, there will be a turn in the spirit realm. He said across the nation, there will be an upset in the spirit. And churches and pastors that are not taking people to another level, there will be upsets all over the nation. People will begin to leave like flies. And they're going to begin to seek after the power. And they're going to end up in some of the most unusual places. Whew. He said an upset in the spirit. I'm doing something new. Doing something new in you, Bishop. Doing something new. Don't be afraid to stand by yourself. I'm doing something new in you. I'm getting ready to separate the wheat from the tail. I'm getting ready to take the church back to the days of Bishop Mason. Stay right where you are. I'm doing something new in you. There will be people that have never even heard this prophecy but they'll feel a shaking in their souls. And they will no longer after Thanksgiving weekend, they will no longer sit in churches because their mother have been there and their father have been there and their uncle helped build the church. They don't care anymore. He said, in Thanksgiving weekend, I will break the soul tie that people have to buildings and people and I will cause them to begin to seek after the power at any cost, by any means necessary. He said, there's a war that is taking place in the heavenlies, even tonight. There is a war that, hey! Evangelist Gardner, take him on in! Take your church in! Coming on! 
around you. Every preacher that's in this building tonight, a new level. Receive it or I'll dry your ministry up. Hey! I'm not using no more talent. I'm not using no more gifts. I'm using the anointed. I'm using those that have paid a price. I'm using those that have been through the fire. I'm using those that have been through the storm. I'm getting ready to reach back on the backside of the desert. And I'm getting ready to pull out those that are in sackcloth and ashes. I'm getting ready to raise up people you ain't never heard of before. Hey! I'm killing it, killing it, killing it, killing it, killing it, killing it, killing it. 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 Killing it, killing it, killing it, killing it, killing it, killing it, killing it. The Hollywood church, killing it, killing it, killing it, killing it, killing it. Right now I'm killing it. Right now I'm killing it. Right now I'm killing it. The Hollywood church, I'm killing it. 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 I'm killing. I'm killing. I'm killing. I'm killing it. 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 Killing. Killing. Come, 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 come. If you're coming with me, come now. If you're coming with me, come now. If you're coming with me, come now. If you're in this building and you're coming with me, said God, come now. Come on! Why the door is open, 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 why the door is open. Come on! In your spirit! While the door is open, 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 while the door is open. If you Don't come no closer, don't come no closer. 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 If you don't want me for real, don't come no closer. If you don't want me for real, don't come no closer. If you ain't ready to sell out, don't come no closer. If you ain't ready to die, don't come no closer. If you ain't ready to be killed for my glory, don't come no closer. If you ain't ready to sacrifice, don't come no closer. If you ain't ready to pass, don't come no closer. Don't come no closer, don't come no closer. If you don't want me for real, don't come. Don't come no closer. Don't play with this spirit. Don't play with this spirit. Don't play with this spirit. It's a divine spirit. It's a divine spirit. Don't play with it. Don't play with it. Don't play with it. It's a divine spirit. 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 It's an uncompromising spirit. It's a divine spirit. Don't play with it. 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 Don't play. Don't play. Don't play. Don't play. Don't play. I'm calling you, I'm calling you, I'm calling you, I'm calling you, I'm calling you. I'm calling you, I'm calling you, I'm calling you. I'm calling you, I'm calling you, I'm calling you. I'm calling, I'm calling, I'm calling, I'm calling. You can't come, you can't come, you can't come, you can't come, you can't come because you're not mine. You can't come, you can't come, but you're not mine. You want to come, but you're not mine. But those that are mine, I'm calling. I'm calling you, I'm calling you, I'm calling you, I'm calling you, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on to another place, come on to another place, come on to another depth, come on to another depth, come on to another height, come on to another height, come! Come, 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 come. Come crying out, 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 cry! Out of your spirit, out of your spirit, out of your spirit, out of your, 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 out of
Open up your mouth. Come after me, said the Lord. Come after me with all of your heart. Oh God, oh God, oh God, I'm doing something new, 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 new. I'm doing something new, I'm doing something new. I'm doing something new, I'm doing something new. I'm doing something new, I'm doing something new. I'm doing something new in your belly tonight. In your belly tonight. In your belly tonight. If you open up your mouth, I'm doing something new in your belly tonight. If you open up your mouth, open up your mouth. Open up your mouth. Open. Open up your mouth. Shout. Come on out of your belly. Out of your belly. Shall flow rivers of living water. Shall flow rivers of living water. Living. Come now, come now, come now, come now, come now. Come now, come now, come now in the next 60 seconds. Come now, 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 come now. Oh, ta 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 ta. Oh, na 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 na. Oh, na 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 Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come sound and come only my remnant 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 come on for the next 60 seconds open up your mouth and tell me yes come on keep on saying it Yeah! 
No more compromise. No more compromise. Turn around and tell three people no more compromise in my life. No more. Who's on the Lord's side? Who's on the Lord's side? I said, who's on the Lord's side? I said, who's on the Lord's side? Who's on the Lord's side? He's saying before Thanksgiving weekend, declare it. Because he said, my hand is getting ready to sweep across the country. And those that are not on my side, they won't stand, mother. He said, declare it tonight. He said, declare it tonight that I'm on the Lord's side, that there's no compromise. I'm coming all the way. I'm here to stay. God help me to give up the world. I'm coming all the way with you. He said tonight, tell my people to declare it, to declare it, to declare it, to declare it. And I'll open up doors, declare it. And I'll make ways out of no way. He said, declare it. Begin to give him a last shout and declare I'm on the Lord's side. Come on, lift your hands up, lift your hands up. There's a worship in you. Come on, come on, come on, open your mouth. There's a worship in you. Come on, throw your head back and begin to worship our God. Come on, there's a divine presence. Come on, he said, throw your head back and worship him. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Begin to open up your mouth and tell him how marvelous he is. Come on, begin to tell him how wonderful he is. Come on, do it, do it, do it. Don't stand there looking at me. Open your mouth up. Open your mouth, baby, and begin to worship him. Open your mouth up. He said, there will be no more gods in the kingdom of the Lord. He said, I'm tearing down every idol worshiper. I'm tearing down every superstar. He said, I want to be lifted up. I don't want nobody else to get my glory. He said, I'm taking my people for myself. He said, that everybody in here, lift your hands up and begin to worship him. Come on, my brother, come on. Come on, give him worship on the keys. Give him worship. Come on, come on, come on. He said, make me your God. Make me your Lord and Savior. Make me your Redeemer. Make me your Deliverer. He said, worship me, for I am even delivering in your homes tonight. I am even delivering in your bodies even as you worship me now. He said, worship me, worship me. Worship me, worship me, worship me. He said, I'm the only mighty God. I'm the ruler of every nation. I'm El Shaddai. I'm more than enough. I'm Jehovah Jireh. I'm Jehovah Nisi. I'm Jehovah Shalom. I'm Jehovah Sitkanim. I am your righteousness. Give me glory, give me honor, give me worship. Open your mouth and worship the Lord. Open your mouth and worship the Lord. Worship the Lord. Worship, worship.
worship, worship, worship. Worship, worship, worship. Worship, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on, a little louder. A little louder. The glory of the Lord is in this place. The glory of the Lord is in this place. The glory. The glory is here. His glory is here. His glory is here. His glory. His glory. His glory is here. Let everything that worship the Lord. I will worship him in spirit and in truth. Come on, worship him. Come on, worship him. Come on, he's high lifted up. Come on, one more time. Just reach. Reach all over the building. Reach with a corporate worship. He is high and lifted up. He is high and lifted up. Oh, ba 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 We are waiting in the presence. We are waiting in the presence. Hallelujah. 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 I hear him saying hallelujah. Come on, come on, begin to say it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, come on, begin to wave your hands and say hallelujah. 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 Oh Lord, we praise your name. All the glory, all the honor. Oh Lord, we praise your name. Oh Lord, we praise your name. Hallelujah. 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 Praise your name. All the glory and all the praise. Oh Lord, we praise your name.
everybody say, everybody say. As a prophet of God, I'm here to tell you that Jesus is soon to come. Yes, he is. When you read in the book of Revelation, you see there isn't a whole lot of stuff that's yet have to be done. Look at the fighting over in Israel. It's Bible prophecy coming to pass. Yes, it is. You better look at the signs of a time and know you ain't got time to mess around. No, you don't. You better think about it tonight. The only reason why you're in here is because God has chosen you. You're not going to be lost. Oh, you ought to praise God right there. You ought to praise God right there. The only reason why you're in here tonight, because God chose you and you ain't gonna be lost. <laughs> you need to praise God for that. I said the only reason why you're in here tonight, because God chose you and you ain't gonna be lost. I'm so glad. Just name me one thing that's worth going to hell for. Oh Lord. Ain't nothing worse for salvation. Name me one thing that you'd rather have than Jesus tonight. Hold on. He drew you in here today. He drew you in here today. To cry, oh no, oh no. Oh, 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 oh. Everybody lift your hands up and say it to the Lord. Oh no. Oh, While they playing that, I'm telling y'all. Something has happened to me, and I can't explain it. And I don't want nothing but Jesus. I want to be saved. I looked up one day, and all that I thought I had accomplished means nothing. I got one goal in mind. I want to be saved. I want to be saved for real, for real. I want to be saved behind closed doors. I don't want to preach the gospel and then I myself be a castaway. I don't want my name up in lights and my soul is lost. So I went back down on my face. And I said, save me all over again, Lord. Wash me all over again. Yeah. Take away the evil out of my heart, Jesus. Purge me and purify me. Make me whole. I want to be a clean vessel. Yeah. I want to be a vessel of honor. I want to have some power in my life to break the back of Satan, to snap the shackles off of the lives of your people. So sanctify me, God. Sanctify me through and through. Purify me through and through. Put me in the fire as many times as you need to. And turn up the heat. I want to die. I want to die in your presence. I want Juanita to die. Kill her. And save me all over again. Take away my cars. Take away my houses. Take away this ministry. Because some people have made the ministry their idol. I said, take it all away, but whatever you do, 
Don't take your Holy Spirit away from me. Take it. I just want to be saved. I came into this building tonight not even knowing whether or not I could preach. Walked in the hotel, out the hotel door, still dizzy, still feeling like I'm gonna faint. And while I was sitting there, the Holy Ghost spoke to me. He said, without me, you can do nothing. If I don't breathe on you, if I don't strengthen you, you're nothing, you're nobody. If I don't give you my strength, you ain't got none. If I don't touch your body, if I don't put my anointing on you, every disease and sickness that's lying dormant in your body that you don't know nothing about, it'll surface and kill you in a minute. He said, it's by my grace. He said, it's my ministry. He said, I strengthen you to do what I will. And I said, God, I'm leaning and I'm depending on you because these are your people and they're not mine. I don't own a people. And while you're in this building tonight, I'm just careful now. Because I don't know about y'all, but some of the preachers know what I'm talking about. You go through a season where you minister and you minister and you minister and you minister and then you go through a season where the Lord call you in and he chastises you. Call you in and he begin to say this, that, 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 that. Take that, that, don't do it. Bang, but, but, no. It's almost like he take you and start you all over again. He said, you're starting all over again. And he said, in this time, everything you do is going to be a challenge because I got to purify your motives. I got to purify your motives while you're preaching. I got to purify your motives as to why you want to do this. You got to purify your motives to find out will you just preach to a crowd or can I still send you to a storefront church? I got to purify your motives. I got to find out what is your purpose for doing this. Is it personal gain? Is it personal reputation? He said, because I said in my word that Jesus made of himself no reputation. But he said, I came to do the will of my father. And so I speak to you tonight, trembling under the power of God, because I have been in his presence. And I know his love, and I know his correction, and I know his grace, but I also am becoming acquainted with his judgment. And so I speak carefully tonight, and I speak sincerely tonight. Because just like I walk in a courtroom, I'm under God's oath. And just like Bishop said, places that I've gone, and I know I've preached because I was the budget. But there's something different when he sent me to soul winners and I can feel it. I can feel it. I can feel something in the atmosphere of this church in your ministry that really want people to be set free and delivered for real and that's what I love about you and so I give you the word of the Lord tonight I know I'm not the same person I was when I when I came here before because if I am then something is wrong. Because though you the audience and we're the preachers, you ought to be able to look at us from season to season and see growth. You ought to be able to look up here and say, oh, prophetess done went to another level. Oh, oh, bishop done went to another level. If I'm the same person I was last year, something is wrong with my seek. That means I'm high in my gift, but I'm low in my seek. And so I speak to you tonight, and I want you to hear this. I'm in a position right now that I have been freed in my spirit to do what God told me to do.
And that that I know he ain't telling me to do, it neither makes me or break me. Because the only thing that matters is what God says. And I believe, and I want you to hear this, because the word of the Lord in Ezekiel said that men prophesied out of their own soulish emotions. They prophesied their own, out of their own spiritual realm, and it was not of the Lord. They said, the Lord said, the Lord said, and the Lord said, I never said. And so he said, even as I take you to this next level in me, I'm going to have to even purify your gift the more. So that you can be careful that you only say what I said, not what you feel like I said. Because what you feel like I said doesn't mean I said it, because you feel it. Because your emotions will play games with you. He said, then you have lied to my people, and there is a penalty. So it's like he backs you up and say, whoa, 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 stop right now. Let me show you something. So I'm careful. But I know tonight that the Lord has spoken to me. And I'm sure of that. I don't have any stories to tell you. I don't have any false promises. I will not stand here and say to you, in 10 days, look for it. But I will tell you this. He said, I am raising up another level of obedience in those that are mine. That's what he said to me. Listen to this. Listen to this. And he said, those that are mine would not have to be convinced to follow me and do what I say do. He said, those that are mine will hear me speak. It will bear witness in their hearts and they will obey it because I said so. Because those that are mine, I don't have to promise them anything. That's what he said to me. He said, if they're really mine, then they already know my credentials. So I don't have to testify of them. He said, I can speak a word to them and they'll just obey me because they're mine. And so he said to me, in this next realm that I'm taking you into, he said, you will preach to thousands, but only those that are mine can obey. Now hear me, the spirit of the Lord prompted my spirit to speak a word over those that are his. And he said, I am calling you to begin a new walk of sober obedience. Sober obedience. That means I don't feel it, I'm not high, I'm not jumping, I'm not speaking in tongues, I'm not running. I'm just doing it because God said do it. 